In the last video I talked about my extruder motor being broken. Well I tr said I wasn't going to try to fix it but I tried anyway and I managed to fix it with some super glue. The problem was just as just as similar as what happened to me before. The gear on the motor shaft was broken. So a super glue fixed it but uh, obviously it's not going to last long. So I ordered new extruders and also ordered a new hot end while I made it. The new extruder is the Flex 3 drive. Uh, it's a 40 to 1 gear ratio extruder. It's well known for its print quality so hopefully it will be good but their shipping usually takes some time. I also ordered a genuine E3D hot end and a hardened steel nozzle with some carbon fiber filament so I can experiment with printing harsh materials as well. Since the extruder problem is at least temporarily fixed, now I'm going to work on the camera mount and as you can see that's what the printer is printing right now. I'm using a different mount than the last one because the I tried test fitting it and it didn't fit very well, so I decided to change it. As you can see the 3D print is done now. I've mounted the camera inside the printed mount and I've mounted the mount to the right side of the 3D printer. I've initially had some problems with the ribbon cable but I've solved those and I'll talk about that in a bit. With this camera I'm hoping to be able to record some time-lapse videos whenever I print something so it won't be just a boring cut in these videos, it will have some sort of music in the background and it will be hopefully more enjoyable to watch. Also this camera provides me the advantage of being able to monitor the 3D printer remotely so it is very useful. I've mounted the filament sensor using a temporary method involving zip ties. This is its temporary place as I intend to move it later on uh, after I figure out a better way of mounting the spools. But right now I have another problem with it. Uh, the filament sensor, whenever there is a filament in it, it causes the Raspberry Pi to crash. I haven't figured out what the reason is and I have no idea. But whenever the button is pressed inside the filament sensor, it causes the Raspberry Pi to crash and after I remove the filament from it, Raspberry Pi reboots and loads Octoprint just fine. This is when I was working on the filament sensor. As you can see based on the mess, I have been working on this for qu on this quite some time. But it's starting to become a real pain because uh, the Raspberry Pi is in a really in inconvenient position to tinker with and I don't really have much working space here either as you can see it's there isn't much room but to, able, to be able to help me with that I'm going to mount the Raspberry Pi to a temporary location and to be able to do that I need to be able to bring the cables outside of the box so I'm going to be drilling a hole on the top cover and mounting Raspberry Pi on top and um, while I'm at it, I'm going to be painting it again because it's quite scratched as you can see. I've now drilled the hole. Now I'm showing you how I initially planned to mount the Raspberry Pi. As you can see, I plan to use the bottom side of the box for the Raspberry Pi that I already had. But I changed that. I'm going to mount the same Raspberry Pi on this and test first. And if it doesn't work, I have a spare Raspberry Pi that I can use. As you can see I've now painted the panel and it's painted very smoothly in black. It looks grayish in this picture but it is actually black, it's just because of the sun. I have now also created a mounting plate for the Raspberry Pi and also the relay board. As you can see it's here, I just used a spare piece of aluminium that I had lying around. That's why it's not cut perfectly but it doesn't matter much since it's the temporary thing. But now I'm going to mount the relay board and the Raspberry Pi and s see if it works. As you can see I've now mounted everything. I did a fresh install of Doctor Print. 
And I also had to swap the Raspberry Pi with the new one since the old one seems to be broken some, for some reason. I've mounted the relay board here as well and did some cable managing and everything seems to be working just fine. As you can see, uh, it loaded fine on my computer. I will now show you the software working fine. I have installed everything and now as you can see when I toggle the PSU it turns on the 3D printer and if I toggle it again and confirm this it will properly turn off the 3D printer as you can see right now and as you can see everything is working fine I put the control box where it was supposed to be and here you can see the new mount that I have on top of it as I said that's temporary and it will go back inside the box later on as you can see the camera works fine right now I didn't need to order the ribbon cable the faulty part was the ras my Raspberry Pi not the ribbon cables If you are curious about my settings that I'm using, I'm showing you those right now. First of all, I will show you my PSU control plugin settings. I have connected the relay board on GPIO pin 11. It's one of those intended to use as a GPIO, not as a power pin or anything like that. I have the 3.3 volt buck converter running to the 40th pin. I also set up a automatic timer to turn off whenever the 3D printer is idle. Here I've added every single filament that I have lying around. The remaining ones are just my guesses, they are not accurate. But we will see how useful this plugin is, I am not sure if it will be or not. And here are the my settings for the filament sensor, but as I said, this doesn't work fine. I, there is something wrong, but I can't figure out what it is. I've also set the set up the pause and resume scripts to be a, able to change filaments a bit easier and also not damage the current 3D printing part. I'm showing those commands right now. If you are interested in these, I will make a separate tutorial video, explain every single one of those and show them working after I also figure out the problem with the filament sensor. I will now talk about why I chose the extruder that I chose, the Flex 3 Drive extruder and not the other ones. Here is the chart that I used when I was working on choosing one of these. But I'm not going to list every single thing on this chart, I'm just going to talk about why I chose it and you can see the details if you want to. First of all, why didn't I choose this new motor for the stock extruder? Well, the main reason is uh, I wasn't quite happy with the printing quality and I wanted an improvement. Same thing goes for the Titan Aero and Titan, whichever configuration you buy from E3D. It will definitely have better print quality than the stock extruder, but it's not the best quality out there. Only upside for me with that, other than the price, is it has wide community so it will be use easier to find things on Thingiverse and also get support from the community. There is also the Flexion extruder option and it's a really well known extruder. I didn't choose it because shipping was too expensive to my country and I don't know how well it will work by 3D printer. I haven't seen too many people use it. There's also the Toranado, not Tornado, extruder. 
It's a 3D print extruder you can find it on Thingiverse, but you will also have to buy some of the parts yourself. It's a decent extruder, but it it doesn't have a big community, so I'm not sure if it will work good. The best best thing about it is it, it has a hot swap system for the hot end, so it's very easy to swap hot ends, and that's better than just swapping the nozzle whenever you want to print with different materials or whatever. It's just easier to swap the hot end. But I didn't choose it because one shipping is too expensive and I will have to 3D print those parts and my 3D printer isn't working really well right now. It's just barely printing because it has some super glue on it and it's definitely not going to last long and I don't want to take my chances with it. I, ch did, I chose the Flex 3 Drive Extruder because it is proven and it has decent amount of people using it with the Black Widow. I don't know about it. other printers, I don't think that many people use it outside of the Black Widow. But it has 40 to 1 gear ratio which is really good. It's I believe it's the best gear ratio out there, it just means it can print at higher details. My only problem with it, again, other than the cost, it takes some time to ship, and that's why I'm not assuming I'm not going to be able to mount it next week, and I'm going to assume it will take at least two or three weeks to arrive. That, at least that's what I've seen people say on the Black Widow owners Facebook group. But anyway, I hope you found this video enjoyable. If you did, please leave a like. And thanks for watching.